it would be very hard, though, for any American president to accept, um, you know, an invasion of Taiwan. This is our bottom line. That's your bottom line. Okay, now we understand that. Well, I guess the Wolf Warrior diplomacy, the advantage is that it's at least very clear and there's not a lot of ambiguity. So in that sense, it's good to know directly what the other side thinks. Mm -hmm. I think the downside is for both sides are actually engaged in wolf warrior. It's not just the Chinese side. I think the starting, especially under Trump and um, in, in, I think continuing under Biden, there's been a very strong uh, view or a strong tone of voice that China is to blame for most of the problems. China has values and sort of bottom line positions on things that it cannot compromise on, for example, say Taiwan or territorial integrity, things like that. And I think that each side has to recognize that in the other. And I think then you after you recognize those things, then you try to find common ground between the two and build something positive. And that to me is the essence of diplomacy, um, simply repeating your country's values um, and your bottom line position doesn't get you very far. So that each side is clear, this is our bottom line, that's your bottom line. Okay, now we understand that. I think the, the Biden administration is trying to figure out a way to show that it is concerned without completely changing the ground rules of Sino-US relations. There are many people in the United States who feel that there should be very forceful support for Taiwan, um, and including uh, articles that have been written saying we should end the ambiguity and simply say we will defend Taiwan. These views are widespread in the United States, but I think there's still the overall feeling that if we do that, this would cause a huge crisis. And we already have so many crises in China-US relations that we really don't need another. So I it would be very hard, though, for any American president to accept, um, you know, an invasion of Taiwan or the... Um, but, you know, I, I think in the, the old way of doing it, it may also made put some responsibility on Taiwan not to do something rash like uh, declare independence or try to cut ties with the mainland. And I think the moderate voices in the U.S. want to keep something like that. So, yes, uh, continue to have support for Taiwan but also to try to make sure that Taiwan doesn't do anything that would push a crisis or create a crisis. There are hundreds of thousands of uh, people from Taiwan, if not millions, I don't know the latest numbers, but hundreds of thousands at least, who live and work in mainland China, invest, open factories, study, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you know, if there were some kind of a, a real crisis, it would be a it would be disastrous for this kind of situation. So keeping it going for an, a bit longer is not a bad solution. I, I know people sometimes want to have a solution to a problem, uh, but sometimes problems are not easy to solve and it's better just to keep things going the way they are until something opens up. And, and, and we, But right now there's no obvious way to solve the problem. And I think it's better if things can continue on as they are now. I think the best thing from my perspective is to have more people to people contact. The study, the students, the exchanges is, is really important. I, I taught American undergraduates in China who went to China for to study at a, a center in Beijing. And I taught them for 10 years. And many of them were part of a program where they first 
they spent the autumn semester in Italy and the spring semester in Beijing. And they would come to Beijing and at the end of it, they would say, Be coming to China was an eye-opening experience for them, that they, it was much more important than going to Italy and that going, that, that coming to China and seeing it for themselves firsthand was a huge change. Now I know a few thousand students every year or 10,000 students isn't much compared to the world population, but it's still something that can affect change. And so I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of people to people, person to person mm -hmm. uh, diplomacy or, or that sort of thing. So Fulbright scholarships, Peace Corps, all those things, some of, some of which the American government ended on, on its own. Um, but I would hope that there could be some kind of similar exchange programs and just more tourism and so on. I know this may be a little ways out because of COVID, but I, I hope that in the future it can go back to that.